Let's not miss this. This is the third story now. This is the third story of a healing. And at the end of this third story, notice what Matthew says. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. You remember, you've studied in Sunday school many times. We all have. That Matthew is writing with a purpose. He's giving witness. He's sharing his gospel. He's telling the good news as he sees it about Jesus Christ. And in Matthew chapter 5, he says about Jesus. Jesus says, I did not come to take away the law. Not one stroke, not one letter. But he says that he came to fulfill the law. Fulfill. Look at what Jesus is doing. Look at what it is that fulfills the law. In other places, that which fulfills the law is called life. And it's not just any life, it's, it's abundant life. With that in mind, just a quick review. Jesus comes off the mountain where he has taught and straightened us out about how to, how to fulfill the law in many, many ways. Now he's talking about prophets. But he's not just talking. He's fulfilling. And the first person he meets is, is a leper. I find it interesting that those who have leprosy, well, they're alive. Their heart's beating. They're breathing. But they're counted by their neighbor and by a whole nation, by all people, they're counted as dead. I wonder what it would be like to be counted by your own family, by your own people by your own nation as dead. The penalty of sin is what, church? The penalty of sin is death. And the leper was counted as dead. And the leper walked up to Jesus and knelt before him and he said, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Make me well. Remember what Jesus said to a man that was just as well dead? He said, I choose. I choose. Now there's a home coming right there. That man went by the way of the priest. He got to turn, return home to his family, to his friends, to his place and station in that community. I wonder if that man, that leper, that unclean sinner celebrated homecoming that day. And then I wonder, I wonder, I wonder why every Sunday is not a homecoming celebration. Look at the second story. 
See, all these stories fit together. At least for me, they fit together. The second story is, well, it's not about a dead man. It's about a Gentile. It's about the people that would be considered, well, dogs. That's right. That's what they were called. The Gentile dogs. They would be considered dogs. I don't know which is worse. You tell me to be treated as if you're dead or to be treated like a dog. You tell me which is, which is worse. But he's more than just a dog, the centurion, you see. He's a Gentile, but he's also the centurion. Well, he's a Roman officer. He's the enemy. He's the very one that Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount to love. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. He goes on to tell Jesus about this servant that he has that is paralyzed and he's my take. This is a man that he sees the, the afflictions. He sees everything that the prophet Isaiah is talking about in this man's life. None of us like to watch suffering, do we? It's good to see you this morning, Bill. We have not enjoyed watching you suffer. We love you. Jeff and Sandy, the community of concern, you're not at the house. You live in a fishbowl, and it's because we love you. We're concerned about you. Jesus said to the man, I'll come to your house. Did you know that? Did you know that when you suffer, when we suffer afflictions of disease or sin, you already know that Jesus chooses to come to your house or your neighbor's house. He's ready to go to touch and to heal and cure. This man said, no, 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 no. I, I'm unworthy to have you under the roof of my house. I think I know why he says that. It's not because he's putting himself down. It's because, as he said, he's a man with authority. He's seen in the community as a somebody with power. And the centurion just simply doesn't want the community or his family to get the wrong idea. Because the moment that Jesus walks under the roof of his house, the whole community is going to see Jesus under the centurion's authority. And he doesn't want that to happen. And so he says, just give the word. Just give the word. And you'll be made well. I wonder when the centurion got home and he saw the man according to God's word, the word that he chose, the word that he chose to make that man clean and whole and healthy. I wonder if they had homecoming. I wonder if they had been thinking about why is every Sunday, why is every day not a homecoming? Maybe it has something to do with whose word we're listening to. The leper listened to the community's word.
until he was finally touched with the word that became flesh. He said, I choose to make you clean. You know, that's what happened at your baptism. It's so simple. He chose to make you and I clean. Then the third story. Look at what he did. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed by with demons. Sometimes we call our children who are getting into trouble, why, you little demon. We all know what it's like to be taken up by some spirit of anger or wrath or fear. But how about a spirit of joy, a spirit of contentment? Spirit of happiness. It says he cured all that were sick. I suggested this last week. How many times have we been healed of a common cold, the flu, a broken bone? When I got to meet Debbie yesterday, I stood at the foot of her bed and I looked at her and I wondered, how many times, how many times, oh God, have you healed her? How many times have you healed her? You see, I do believe. We say we believe this, church. We believe in the resurrection the dead. That's home to me. That's home to me. But the only way to celebrate, we have to be real careful. You see, to love one another means we have to listen to one another true? To love one another, it means we have to listen to one another. But notice what Peter's mother-in-law rises to do. Did you catch it? She rises and she serves Jesus. Don't we see it? We sure see it, don't we? And she got up and began to serve him. I'm not here to serve you. I'm here to love you while I serve him. You're not here to serve me. I appreciate that you love me and that you're patient with me even when you want to choke the out of me. I felt you back there. Thank you for having my back. We're called to love our neighbor. But we serve him. We serve him only. In the days and weeks and the months to come, a lot of people are going to ask you what you are. You're not a what. Whatever you want to fill in, it's okay. We've got to live in the world so we can tell one another what we do and what we think and what we believe. So let me tell you who I am. I'm just a servant. I'm a son 
that serves at the will of the Father. When I'm looking at the daughters and the Son of God, and it's real easy to get confused and get caught up in what and forget who we are. And so we come to this table to remember who we are. And most of the time when I come, I have to spend a considerable amount of time naming all of the what's that have got in my way. Because Bill Cole, my life would be a whole lot easier if you'd just be the boss. And when things go wrong and you're the boss, then I can tell Nancy that you're at fault, not her and not me. Serve the Lord and Him only. And every day that we do will be like homecoming.